Hello everybody, my name is Josh Nass, amateur radio call sign KI6NAZ. I am an amateur radio operator here in the United States. There are millions of amateur radio operators in the United States and around the globe. And today... Hey Josh, it's 2021. Can you explain why ham radio? And today I'm going to introduce you to some of the amateur radio that you may not be familiar. You've probably heard of amateur radio or ham radio in the past. It has been around for over 100 years at this point. And much of what you know about amateur radio probably consists of someone sitting in a room very similar to the one behind me, probably talking on a radio like the one behind me, making contacts across the globe, talking about interesting discussions that they have had with other amateurs in other countries and on other continents. Well, it goes much further than that, and I'm going to bring it to you today. Thanks for watching. Amateur radio has a rich and long legacy of creating new technologies and adapting technologies that already exist into amateur radio. And again, just so that we're all talking on the same baseline, amateur radio is a wireless form of communication. We use commercial off-the-shelf radios. Yeah, Sayu. As well as radios that we make on our own. Um, connection that you can go in here free up that BNC space. All right, we're gonna flip her over. Given the deep technical knowledge that many hams have, we have been successful in adapting newer technologies to amateur radio to leverage their capabilities. One area that's very interesting and seems to be growing all the time is digital communication. We use our radios connected to our computers or Raspberry Pi devices, pretty much any operating system that's available, to almost treat our radio as a wireless long path network connection. It goes deeper than that, but basically we're able to use our computer to send audio tones to our radio which gets transmitted and then received by other individuals that are running similar software and similar, similar radio configurations. This allows us to transmit text keyboard to keyboard communication, actual text messages, emails, images, the list goes on, but this is one of the areas that is incredibly powerful for us in the amateur radio hobby because computers, particularly the way they work in, com in conjunction with our radios, allows us to pick out signals far, far deep in the noise, which means anyone pretty much starting out in amateur radio can get started with digital modes and make extremely long distance contacts and include some kind of data traffic as well for those that are interested in emergency preparedness. Speaking of emergency preparedness, at least here in the United States, and I'm sure it is like this for other countries, amateur radio is considered a service, a service that can be called upon when we lose communication in traditional means. Cell phones are great, you know, we all use them and love them, but it's quite easy for them to become overcrowded or to completely go offline if you lose a lot of power. Think of the recent situation that they had over the winter in Texas. Well, with amateur radio, because it is just two-party communication, one radio talking to another radio. Alpha Delta 8, Foxtrot Delta. Alpha Delta 8, Foxtrot, come again. Foxtrot Delta, Alpha Delta 8, Foxtrot Delta. Fo okay, got it. Alpha Delta 8, Foxtrot Delta. You are a... Uh, 5252 two into kilo 1139 into another radio or one radio talking to many radios we're able to leverage that capability in emergency preparedness situations amateur radio operators work with first responders hospitals and different entities like the red cross to bring back a communication network when things are at their worst after an emergency in many situations the very first line of communication that is brought back on the air is amateur radio and there are multiple groups that enlist the help of amateur radio operators or are composed entirely of amateur radio operators that practice together and drill in mock emergency situations to prepare for an emergency that could occur. These hams are often fully portable with solar power and battery backups to go into difficult situations and difficult terrains and be able to get communication out for whatever situation arises. One such group is ARIES which is the Amateur Radio Emergency Service, which is coordinated by the ARRL. But it goes beyond just a group of hams working together in an emergency situation or connected to first responders. 
Hams are an incredibly helpful bunch and they often will get on the air after an emergency and help bridge traffic out of disaster areas. In one such example during Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico, Hams in the stateside of the continental US were helping to broker traffic, goodwill messages back home to relatives, other folks, back and forth from Puerto Rico into the United States to let people know that the people that were living in Puerto Rico were still okay and that helped at least put some minds at ease during the very trying time. Further, the actual hams that were in Puerto Rico helped reestablish communications, bringing repeaters back online and allowing hospitals to communicate. But ham radio is a lot about fun too. One of my favorite things to do is something called summits on the air. It's where you take a backpack, uh, go on a day hike up to a summit and make contacts from the summit. <laughs> CQ Soda, CQ Soda for Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. November 7, Hotel Echo X-ray, N7HEX. Really? N7HEX, you got a good signal there. Come back. Those contacts lead to points, which goes into a worldwide game, basically called Summits on the Air. People do this every day, every weekend. They get out with their ham radio, get some exercise and get on the air, which is always a lot of fun and a challenge. Further, for those of you that don't have a lot of summits in your hometown, there's something called parks on the air. With all kinds of miserable QRM. I'm getting the same, I'm getting the same. It's gonna be a five, six, both ways, five, six, both ways, QSL. Very similar concept, you go to a park, you set up your radio station, and you make contacts. And if you can get enough contacts, you activate that park. Activating the park means you get the points, and it goes on the worldwide score list. What makes outdoor activities like poda and soda so interesting is we get a little bit of exercise, we get to practice our MCOM skills, which is emergency communication, by having backpack portable or vehicle portable equipment that we can quickly establish communication across the country. This is always a lot of fun to, after setting up an antenna, getting in front of your radio and start communicating who you can pull out the noise, who can hear you, and make those very impressive contacts, sometimes DX contacts. And DX, if you ever heard that term, means long distance or international contacts in some cases. This means simply from your home location or your activation location, making contacts to another country, meeting new and interesting people and having a discussion online. DX has broad appeal within the amateur radio community. It is both a portable activity, but it's also a home-based activity. A, a three element full size Yagi at 110 feet and 1500 watts. Everybody always is trying to chase a new, interesting and rare contact. So much so that there are groups of individuals that will go on de-expeditions. These industrious hams will hop on ships and planes and fly or, or boat to remote locations, set up their amateur radio stations and make contacts. There are lists online of the most sought after geographic locations that you can activate radios from. And there are many de-expedition groups that are always establishing new expeditions to new and interesting lands to allow people to make those interesting contacts and get them in their logbook. Now, one of the key factors of amateur radio is making contacts, talking to other hams on the air. It could be as simple as a meetup that you have once a day with friends, once a week or once a month. You hop on the air, long distance communication and have a chat. We call that a rag chew or chewing the fat, I guess you could say. But there are weekends where the goal is to make as many contacts as you can in a 24 hour, 12 hour, or less hours, what we call a sprint competition. These are called contests. And the way to look at it is, is it's a race. It's a race to see who can make as many contacts as fast as possible. These contests cover voice modes like single sideband, Morse code, which is still very popular and active in amateur radio, and the aforementioned digital modes. 
The winner of contests usually receive an award of some kind, like a plaque, and there are banquets that are set aside for yearly events to recognize many of the contesters that is again a worldwide sport and activity. For me though, sometimes I just like the simple things and I have a couple of radios in my car that allow me to do local communication, what we call line of sight communication on the very high frequency and ultra high frequency bands, communicating to radio towers on the top of hills. This is great for local comms. Again, it's one-to-one -one communication or facilitated through this repeater. It's robust in that if we ever had a power outage or some disaster, we'd already have a built-in way to communicate and get assistance or to aid others if we, if we ever needed to. But more than that, it's just fun. Driving in your car in a busy commute, you can be talking to your friends and not have to worry about anything else that's going on and just have a little me time, I guess, behind the wheel. In addition, I also have a radio that does high frequency radio, which allows beyond line of sight communication. With that, I can talk from Southern California to my friends on the East Coast very regularly. And for those of you that are interested in space, well, we've got you covered in amateur radio as well. There are many low Earth orbit satellites that have amateur radio repeaters built into them. And that allows us from our home location with a Yagi, which is a directional antenna, to point at a satellite as it's passing and be able to talk to individuals states away, sometimes further than that. And it's a lot of fun. It's probably the most fast paced amateur radio activity I can think of because you know that uh, pass, that satellite is really moving and that pass can complete in as little as eight minutes. So you really gotta be ready when you're, uh, when you're out there, key up that radio and start making contacts. But more than anything, amateur radio is like a club. It is a community of people that all are interested in participating in and furthering wireless communication. There are myriad different aspects to this hobby. I've always referred to it as a lifelong hobby. It's something that gives back to you in new and interesting ways that you probably never expected once you get started. Many that join the hobby probably get started with a simple handy talkie like this, which allows for a couple miles in communication or those a bit longer communication lines via a repeater. This is where a lot of people start, but amateur radio have, having so many interesting niches and little complexity holes that you can fall into of interest, you'll find something new, compelling, and you'll want to pursue it. I have in the 15 or so years that I have been a licensed amateur, got to experiencing so many interesting things, hanging out with friends, meeting new people on the air, meeting them in person at ham fest, which are get togethers where we come together and talk about radio. Ooh, look at the ham set. I'll be back. I got so many people radio. to talk. Uh, buy and swap radios. There is so much camaraderie in getting a fellow ham to help you assemble an antenna and get it up on the roof, to building a radio. It, it goes on and on. There are plenty of amateur radio operators out there that will come with you on campouts to set up and play radio while you're out in the field. It, it just, it cannot be, I can't state it enough that Amateur radio really makes life fun. It makes it interesting to wake up in the morning and think about what fun you're gonna have this weekend or maybe this evening, meeting up on your friends on radio or building a new radio or participating in an event like Soda or Poda. Now, also, there is a very important radio event. Seven Tango Juliet, you are one Delta, <laughs> uh, Arizona, Alpha Zulu. It's always the fourth weekend in June, and it is the ARRL Field Day. It is designed as an emergency preparedness event, a fun, non-competitive contest, and a great way for someone new and interested in amateur radio to come out into the field and see what it's all about. Hopefully this is intriguing enough to you to want to make that next step and find out how to get involved either in a ham club or check out the American Radio Relay League and see what the next steps are. If this does sound interesting to you, the very first thing you should probably do is to look into taking a license exam. 
We are licensed by the FCC and we do have to pass a 35 question test. It's not a difficult test. It mainly pertains to important things to remember for safety and rules and regulations of getting on the air because as a radio operator, putting out the power that we're putting out allows us to make very wide and long contacts. Having an amateur radio license gives you a lot of power. You can make contacts in dire situations. You can make long distance contacts pretty much at your whim if you have the equipment to support it. And so there's a lot of responsibility in that. And that's why there's usually a test that goes along with it, whichever country you're a citizen of. So consider checking out what the American Radio Relay League has to offer by taking some of the links in the description. They'll guide you on the next steps on getting started with amateur radio and figuring out what it has to offer you and what you have to offer the community. I really do hope you consider joining us out on the air. Again, I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. See ya.